Yep. All right. I have started the recording and we can get going. Okay. Good morning. Good evening. Good afternoon, everyone. We just flashed by our uh, weekly reminder on the um, <clears throat> antitrust guidelines. Um, so on today's agenda, um, oh my God, we're <laughs> migrating our mailing list. That should be fun. Uh, hopefully that will work smoothly. Um, do you know when that's going to happen, Todd? Is that just going to be no change to the actual URLs for the mailing list? Um, so slight change. It will still be list.hyperledger.org. Uh -huh. um, we're moving everything over to groups.io. Uh, yeah. For the Linux Foundation, all the projects are moving over. They've already moved quite a few of the projects that we host. Uh, oh, okay. So simplified the process and smoothed a lot of that stuff out. Um, this is kind of the pre FYI for that. We would be looking at doing this in about two weeks. Oh, okay. uh, so at that point we'll give uh, just further details on the mechanics uh, of this. Okay. This will provide a lot better functionality and ease of managing subscriptions and all of that. So it's a really, really solid uh, thing okay. to move towards. All right. you know, somebody you. was asking me the other day about the, the Sawtooth mail list was originally set up as STL when it was Sawtooth Lake. I wonder if this might be a good time to migrate that name to Sawtooth and whether we could have the, uh, the old name redirect uh, to, to a new name at the same time. Yeah, I, I believe that should be fine. Let me just confirm on that. But we would also be looking at just kind of doing a quick audit if there's any other mailing lists that may not make sense to have anymore uh, that haven't been used, you know, in two plus years. So um, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll take a note on that and um, see if we can make that happen. Also, just, um, well, I guess we could take this offline, but maybe we could also have shorter names, <laughs> like instead of Hyperledger dash everything, since it is at Hyperledger, you know, list of Hyperledger.org. Yep. Maybe just, you know, fabric, sawtooth, burrow. Um, and we could alias so that they both work for a period, I guess. Um, just a thought. Anyway. Yep. Okay, so access planning, um, and then we have Dave Hughesby, who's been put off for now like three or four <laughs> weeks in a row. So he'll be first up after the reminder of the uh, Hackfest planning. Yay! The bug <laughs> bounty. Um, uh, we have to finish up the template for standardizing and launching new working groups. And so we'll pick up where we left off in that discussion last week. Uh, <clears throat> We have a request for Hyperledger Composer to go to 1.0, um, uh, but I don't think anybody's on yet. Uh, has anybody joined Todd uh, to represent Composer? I'm trying to find somebody. Well, do you know Thanks, somebody? Yeah, it, if we do find somebody, then we'll have that. If we don't, then we'll do that next week. Um, but I would encourage people to review the request if they haven't already done so. Um, and again, that's going to, you know, be, uh, you know, guided given the, the, uh, agreement we had last week on, um, uh, getting a review for 1.0, uh, before you're active and so forth. Quarterly project updates. Pardon me. I will do mine uh, for fabric this week and next week is Dan for sawtooth or maybe somebody else, but next week yeah, is Dan sawtooth. would love to throw that on somebody else. <laughs> I tried that. <laughs> uh, okay. Quarterly working group updates. We have performance and scale, and I did see Mark on, so I think we're good to go for that, right, Mark? Yes, should be. Awesome. So uh, any other topics for the agenda? Okay. Todd, you want to kick it off with Hackfest planning? Sure thing. Uh, and just really quickly, we are at Quorum now. Um, awesome. So on the Hackfest side, again, the Amsterdam information is there and in the agenda that went out. Uh, the other topic was the fall Hackfest. We put out two potential dates to piggyback on uh, various conferences, one in August piggybacking on Open Source Summit North America in Vancouver, the other uh, being on the back end of the Hyperledger Member Summit. Uh, quite a few people responded to this. It does seem like the preference is to tack this on to Hyperledger Member Summit. So that would put this October 3rd and 4th in Montreal. Cool. Um, and it seemed like a lot of the 
the key players that come to our Hackfest uh, are interested in that date. And then tacking that on to an event where we have, you know, 230 plus member companies um, likely to be there, probably a good way to get some engagement. So um, call for any questions, concerns, or otherwise uh, we can likely just move forward with that. So we're going to go with the October one? That's what it looks like from the doodle poll. Um, Just wanted to check with this group one final time, however. Yeah, no, that works for me. Um, Cool. Any, uh, any, have, any concerns sure. from anyone? Yeah. Hearing none, sounds like October after the member summit or before is, is it. Excellent. Sounds good. Thank you. Uh, okay. Dave, on to you. Dave, you're up. Yes! <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. No, 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 no. We'll have to put you next week. Ah, <laughs> uh, you're killing me. <laughs> All right. So I'll make this really brief. Um, I know that it's not widely known because it's been public. Um, or sorry, it's been private up until now. The TSC themselves are aware of this, but um, uh, we have been running a private bug bounty through the HackerOne platform for the last six months. Um, currently, it's just the Fabric project, but um, we're now that Sawtooth is 1.0 and, and you know, quote unquote production ready, we're going to move to have it included in the bug bounty as well. Um, I wanted to come to the TSC to get approval um, to take our bug bounty public. Um, we ran a private bug bounty and got some traffic, but I think it will serve us better to open it up to a broader audience. Um, mostly because this Bitcoin technology, or sorry, Bitcoin, blockchain technology, shame on me, blockchain technology um, is still very new to most people. And so, we were getting a pretty limited reach inside of HackerOne's um, list of, of uh, security analysts. And so I think the best way for us to get more eyeballs on the code, um, trying to poke holes in it would be to, to um, open it up to the public. Um, I think the proposed, well, no, not, the proposed plan is that Marta and I would announce um, that we're opening it up to the public during our RSA talk um, in a week or so. Um, and we would still continue to use the HackerOne platform for um, receiving reports and handling them confidentially and disclosing them and handling the payouts of the bounties. Um, and I think the we'll make a small adjustment to the bounty payouts downward um, just because there might be a huge influx of participants and it's to protect our, our existing bug bounty um, funds, but we'll quickly ramp them up if we're not getting any interest. Um, I'm not gonna give any details on numbers, we can talk about it privately. Um, but uh, yeah, I, any questions? If you guys approve, it, you know, I'd love to move forward with it. I, I was just curious, have we, has anyone found any yet? I no. mean, the answer to that is no. Uh, we've had some reports about Hyperledger web properties. Yeah. Um, <laughs> lots of some, those. Lots of those. Yeah, but um, nobody has really dug their teeth into the underlying blockchain code. And so I was, you know, we tried everything. We did a bunch of internal marketing to their um, hacker group. We tried doing, like, lowering the barrier to entry, offering to do intro sessions with them and just nothing it was crickets yeah well i mean i think a lot of that is actually due to the fact that most of the hackers toolkits are really oriented towards breaking into typical web-based applications and yeah properties. for sure so i mean that's that's what they have in their tool belt and uh they don't have a whole lot around blockchain and grpc and all the other stuff so yeah yeah yeah, um, our security auditor that's been doing all of our security audits had to spend time building a, a toolkit to yeah. try to penetrate those uh, API endpoints. Yeah, we have the same with uh, what do we use? Uh, coal fire. Okay. All right. Any, any questions? questions? Any any further questions besides Mark? Any objections? Hearing none, 
going once, going twice, sold. Yay! So cool. <laughs> cool. This is important. Um, this yeah. is a big step in our security. Yep. Good. All right. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Dave. Um, next up <clears throat> is to uh, bring back the discussion on the uh, working group proposal. Uh, Brian and Tracy, do you want to pick up where we left off? Sure. So, uh, in looking at kind of the the main concerns that exist uh, on the process, it, it seems like the the biggest concern that people have uh, is really around um, elections as uh, mm -hmm. a topic of uh, conversation. So, um, we had suggested in here that uh, elections would happen for an initial chair within the first three months and then every year after that. So opening it up for discussion on that topic. Uh, uh oh, where's Rocket Chat go? <clears throat> and, and yeah, I, I know it, it'd be simpler if the uh, um, uh, TSC just appointed heads. Um, I think a, an election can be done very quickly and is a great way to kind of get the the, the working group to make its first important decision as a working group <laughs> uh, and, uh, um, and bootstrap and, uh, and have a sense of ownership by the working group. And, and I think if there's ever a, a lack of either candidates or if the um, outcome feels weird, you know, the TSC can always, you know, do, take, take a corrective action of some sort. But I think, uh, I think having, the, uh, having an election is a good way for the working group to feel vested in um, in the, in the process and in the outcomes. And yes, it can be gamed and yes, we should uh, talk about, you know, who can vote and that sort of thing. Um, <clears throat> but I, at steady state and for the vast majority of kind of how we view these working groups working where it's amongst people who um, have met, have known each other, um, I think with a few tweaks uh, to the election process, we can keep it from becoming a overly politicized kind of thing. Um, and generally, uh, as I said in the last call, you know, the, the working group chair is not just an honorific kind of title, it's actually going to be required to do stuff. <laughs> so um, uh, it'll be, you know, it, it'll be something people, uh, if, if somebody wants to compete to be the working group chair, um, more power to them in a way. I mean, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's, not, a, it's not a free ride. I don't know, what do people think? I mean, you know, to date, we've basically been using the TSC as the, as the body that's choosing working group chairs. What, what's, the, um, <clears throat> what's the real threat or what's the real downside if a working group election is gamed? I mean, it's a working group, right? They're not making serious decisions about the direction of the project. Sure itself. they are. Well, I mean, potentially, yeah, they, they definitely yeah. are. I mean, I think that, um, you know, certainly, I mean, if I look to, you know, for, let's just take, you know, uh, for, for a few examples, right? The white paper working group, done an excellent job. They published papers on behalf of the TSC and, and the organization generally. That's pretty important stuff. The... Um, uh, the architecture working group is also, you know, publishing documents that, you know, I think have uh, quite a bit of relevance. The performance and scaling working group is also on that same course. So, yeah, they're, I think working groups are equally as important as, as projects. They're a little bit different, though, in that we need somebody to sort of cat herd. And um, now, again, from an industry perspective, you know, maybe that's a little bit different, but Certainly, I mean, are, are we saying now that, um, you know, somebody could come along and, and bump Rom from chairing the architectural working group by gaming the system? I don't like that. I don't think that's appropriate or fair at all. All right, I see that perspective. Just playing devil's advocate, I was just wondering. Yeah. I mean, um, I guess- I would also add to this that when we have a working group chair that disappears, or can't continue to engage, the idea that the group feels empowered, meaning they elected the chair, and they, can, they feel like they can propose what will happen next, I think will help um, keep those groups making steady progress. 
right, but, but I in think the event that the membership changes. Right, but I think that again, we have the concept of what is the working group, right? And if the working group is just the people that are, if the bar to, to be a member, a voting member of the working group is to subscribe to a mailing list, that's too low. That's just too low, I think. I agree with that. I mean, yeah. it's. Um, I think there are definitely some working groups that have a risk of being politicized, like the performance yeah. and scaling working group definitely comes to mind. Um, yep. Yeah, so I'm, 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 I'm really uncomfortable with just mailing list. <laughs> it's the bar. Um, Brian, I, I, I just, it's just one, one, one suggested hack to that was, you know, people who are subscribers as of, you know, like a month before the election. No, that's not. also hackable. I mean, again, it takes a lot more subscribing work to, to a mailing list is, <laughs> is not a bar. It is not, there's no participation involved. Um, you know, we, we have, <clears throat> we have a process whereby the chair of a working group is um, uh, basically tracking, you know, who's been an active contributor, active participant, in a working group and you know we've asked them to track that so that for the annual elections we can add those names to the list of um, active contributors to the technical work. Um, well, think that, and this is actually part of the difficulty right because we don't have any way of tracking participation beyond the working group chair. Right but if they're maintaining that as I think certainly some of them certainly are then we have a list in the wiki of who's a member, if you will, who's an active participant. I can appreciate that that might be the list of people who can vote. But if you're not an active participant, why are you getting a vote? This doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, all of the meetings that we're, that we're participating in are taking minutes, all the working group yeah. meetings that are taking minutes with a list of attendees that are showing up for the working group. That, that's a substantially higher bar than... Uh, than just the mailing list. Right, I, I totally agree with that, Mike. So you could make it p people who participate in the, the, the calls. Yes, those who are going to be in the vote, you know, I mean, again, we're, we're, we're accumulating, by, but the working group chairs are figuring out who's an active participant so that we can augment the commit totals and so forth to indicate which working group participants are uh, eligible to vote in um, uh, for the TSC. Yeah, I was going to ask, and, does and it? I, I think it should be in that same set. And I guess, you know, I, well, so, so that would be, that's, that's a, a, perhaps an easy way out. Um, rather than mailing list participants, um, uh, you could have the people who are showing up to the regularly scheduled calls. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I agree with that. I like that. I think that's the best we have so far. Well, I, I, I don't know. I mean, no. go ahead. Yeah, so, uh, no, I was just saying showing up is, is an easy thing too, right? Like I dial in and that's it. So, I, I mean, I'm perfectly fine with it, but I don't think it solves the problem that is attempting to be solved here. Um, which is people subscribing to the mailing list. Um, but what, you know, that's, that's a, a possible concern that people should think about. And I, I also think that leaving it up to the hands of the, the chair as to selecting who has participated enough is very subjective as well. So um, I wouldn't suggest going that direction either. So we've, for the TSC elections, right? We've basically been saying the chair writes down Basically, we've been doing what the last thing Tracy said is the chair writes down the people that they viewed as active participants, but people that feel like they've been active participants can, you know, like send an email to the, I think, I forget who it was, but they could send an email and say, hey, you know, I was an active participant, uh, please, you know, add me. So would something like this work where if the chair wrote a list of names down and then people that uh, thought people that thought they were left off could basically email the TSC or email someone and say, Hey, I got left off. So 
So before we dive further into who should vote, I want to ask again, do we even need an election system at all? I mean, what problem are we trying to solve? Today, I mean, the, the whole thing came about, okay, we need a bit more for, formal process for people to propose a new working group, which I think is fine. But now we are getting into a whole process discussion, which quite frankly, I don't think has been a problem to date. We have several working groups that are in existence. They all have chairs. Somehow they got there with approval of the TSE. But, you know, I don't know that we need to get into this whole process of an election every year on top of it. Since our, our no. <clears throat> the, the, the goal for this wasn't to um, uh, make any changes to existing working groups. Um, I, my, I would imagine the existing ones would be grandfathered in if they wanted to use the new process. Great. The point here is there are a bunch of new groups that we'd like to propose that people have been coming to us to ask to be created that are industry specific ones kind of modeled after the healthcare working group. And um, I, I was concerned at least about burdening the TSC with having to um, sort through names of people they didn't know um, or processes they weren't engaged in to, to make a decision that could also be at, at risk of being politicized, right? Um, uh, and to try to drive amongst the, w the working groups, like uh, to make their first meaningful decision amongst themselves <laughs> um, and to decentralize a fair bit too, because um, I worry the TSC is, is very hands-on with each of these working groups that it'll feel overwhelmed. There'll still be reporting, there'll still be an accountability from these working groups to the TSC. Uh, it was just a desire to try to, you know, uh, uh, keep the burden upon the TSC lightweight. So, <clears throat> yeah, I can appreciate that. But to Arno's point, we haven't had a problem to date, right? People, uh, you know, the, the process has generally, for, for working groups, has generally been somebody gets a bee in their bonnet and thinks that, you know, there's a need for driving a working group and that individual typically gathers additional support for the idea brings it forward, makes a proposal, they get to be chair. Um, and, you know, we've had a couple of cases where um, the, the, the chair sort of drifts away and, and things start going fallow and, um, and then we come back to the TSC and somebody says, hey, I wanna take over the reins and it's, it's worked out. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that, that's very much how I feel as well. And, you know, quite frankly, I'm grateful to the people who are volunteering to be chair. Yeah, absolutely. That we really have a problem of people competing for the seat. <laughs> so right. I don't know. So, I'm not opposed to the whole election thing. I just feel like we're overshooting something there a little bit. All right. Well, you know, um, we'd like to move forward with a proposal uh, and start creating, uh, getting some new proposals for working groups in and in front of the TSC. So yeah. uh, if it's the consensus sure. of the broad TSC and not just the two, a few people speaking that um, they want uh, to be able to, to appoint and have the responsibility mm -hmm. for appointing um, the, the chairs, of the working groups, then I'd rather move forward on this than get hung up on it. So let's do that. Yeah, and with that eye to making sure that we got all the right perspectives, are are there any participants on from the working groups that feel that there's some improvement that could be made on, on how the, the chair was uh, selected? That's an awkward question to come out and say <laughs> that you hate the chair of the working group that you're participating in, but... <laughs> As it, it, isn't it more likely that the chair is kind of the sacrificial lamb that gets all the responsibility and, you know. None of the glory? Yeah, none of the glory. So easy, I suppose, to say. Yeah. <laughs> they should have badges, right? Yeah, you know, I, I have a, like, I, I agree with, with Mick there because, you know, I participated in, in architecture working group since day one, and I remember the first a community meeting in New Jersey that Ram approached me and say, you know, we need something like this and, and we agreed and, and Ram been serving as the chair since then. I'm, I haven't seen anyone volunteer to say, you know, I will help Ram to take over this uh, for a while. But, you know, I have to say, uh, you know, kudos to him that been doing yeah. this for more than two years. 
um, and, and it's been working fine. They've been stepped in for Christopher and been doing right. a great job ever since. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, again, I think it, it basically works, Brian. Um, yeah, and I, I agree with that statement that it, it, it's been working fairly well. I think that the election would actually be more likely to be perceived as a way out or a way of, of taking turns being the sacrificial lamb. Um, what, without elections, I think something that does happen is um, others in the group are happy to let the, the, the other guy take a bullet for the team on a perpetual basis. I guess I'm also responding to, you know, when we uh, launched the healthcare working group, we appointed um, three chairs um, who had volunteered to us to do it. And there seemed to be a lot of pushback on that, that list from people who said, well, who are these people who got, who, who appointed them boss? <laughs> uh, and, you know, and that, that surprised us a bit too, but then we said, okay, well, sure, let's, let's do an election there. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, that, that, it may, maybe we over responded to um, to to a few squeaky wheels, but but that was uh, and that wasn't the TSC. That was that was um, hyperledger staff. So maybe that was our mistake in in being the ones to to set that up and appoint them um, uh, rather than coming to the TSC. Uh, but uh, I think the there's a there's the burden of politic politicization <laughs> politicization um, somewhere, and if the TSC wants to bear that burden. Um, and it, it's worked fine so far. Uh, it hasn't been highly politicized yet. Um, uh, but uh, uh, I just worry about, you know, decentralization, I guess. So, all right. I uh, said so my piece. We'll, we'll adjust this to be, to, to, to hold off on any, any election process for now and just make it appointed by the TSC. It'd just be nice to have some way of making sure that, you know, uh, uh, there's some check that the TSC thinks about its responsibility to mm -hmm. either you know, rotate that chair or, or be a check on that, you know, abuse of power <laughs> chair. Not that there's much really. I don't um, think there's been much abuse of power, certainly. No, no. And again, this is not a comment on the existing yeah. working groups. This is an anticipation of bringing a new set of working groups in that are yeah. not technology related, you know, that are related to the adoption of this technology by different sectors. And so the participants are going to be very different kinds of participants on those working yep. groups. Um, and they'll, I don't know, they might want to work. Well, I think, yeah, I think again, we have now, we have the working group reviews and, um, you know, I think we'll find out pretty quick if a chair isn't being effective in, in leading their group and that'll offer up an opportunity for the TSC to maybe put out a call for people to, you know, to, to fill the, the gap if that's interesting to them. I, I, um, I, I would like to point out just that, uh, you know, if the if the chair isn't doing their job in a way that's conducive to helping other people come into the community, uh, then it is possible that you end up with a very select set of people who are participating in working groups, even though there's others who would have liked to have joined, right? So I, I think you, you have to be careful in, in whether or not something looks healthy, but is truly not healthy. Um, and, and making sure that you're truly aware of what's going on uh, behind the scenes, which adds an additional level of burden, I think, to the whoever decides to, to govern these. Well, So okay. I think just I to try we'll to wrap it. this up, I guess, Brian, I think I heard you say, let's move forward with, you know, having the TSC essentially um, uh, ratify the proposed chair in a, in a proposal and, and, and leave it at that. I guess so. Yep. And, and at, at its leisure, it could appoint a new chair. Sure. Yeah. Okay. All right, we'll go back. Anybody and have um, concerns with that? No, but to the, the comment about these upcoming working groups being maybe different from the other ones and mm -hmm. the observation that we now have um, these, these periodic updates to the TSC, I think that that's been effective from my perspective to... I, I do as well. And I think that, again, it's, it's on us as the TSC to make sure that we're asking the right questions so that we don't have a situation... Pardon me, 
uh, a situation where a working group seems productive or active, but isn't really. You know, yeah, and, and, and to that end, so I, I added a sentence up on uh, work <clears throat> products uh, underneath the working group application. Uh, I didn't put much much time into wordsmithing. I just typed it up now, but the intent there is just uh, to be clear on what is it that we're expecting from the working group? And then when the working group does come on those quarterly updates, uh, is there something objective for us to be able to assess their progress with? I think, I think the report back is the um, source of objectivity. Is that, where where you where you check that? Yeah, but it's it's I guess what I'm just trying to have a, a little bit of discussion on to make sure that that we all have similar or non conflicting views is what is the you know what's what's the point of having the working group when a working group comes in? Uh, it's easiest for for me if I'm overseeing some activity like that to know what the objectives are for that activity. Mm -hmm. So if, if those are stated fairly clearly up front in the charter of the project, they can always be added to or amended. But I think sometimes we've, we've seen working groups that are like discussion groups mm -hmm. and it's, it's harder for them to have forward progress because they don't have an objective that they're working to. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to uh, call that out for, for that's my view in, in assessing the working group and, and see if there's conflicting views of that or, or whether that needs to be articulated more clearly in this template. Any other comments? If not, I think we should take it to a vote to, to Brian's point to uh, Well, I guess, I guess, you know, uh, we'll, we should come back with a draft that um, removes the elections piece and just sees so that changes other pieces. Um, I guess the other question I'd ask is if there's any other parts of the proposal that um, people wanted to, whether there were open questions for or um, we needed to close. And Tracy, I don't know if your sense was that the elections piece might have been the only open remaining piece. It seemed like that was the biggest um, concern that people had when I looked at the, the comments, Brian. The rest seemed pretty straightforward that uh, we could resolve them. I think the only other one that um, somebody brought up was the agendas, but I personally wouldn't change uh, requiring agendas for our uh, working groups. So, um, but I guess I should not make decisions. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, this is a TSC's call. So yeah, so I brought up the agenda thing and the canceling the meeting 24 hours in advance. Given that we don't cancel TSC meetings 24 hours in advance, it's probably unreasonable to require working groups to cancel 24 hours in advance. Uh, particularly when you get emails from people the night before a morning meeting being like, oh, hey, you know, you know, me and these five other people are at this conference. Sorry, we can't make the meeting. Uh, so I'd, pro I'd propose we scrap the 24 hour rule. I, I think as a matter of just being considerate to everybody that it's good to have that as a stated intent. Well, that, I mean, it's a great stated intent, but it's just, ne it never happens in practice. Not even yeah. the TSC meeting. <clears throat> stated intent is one thing. Requirement or mandate is a totally different thing. I agree. <clears throat> change please to please try to <laughs> <laughs> so I, I i suggest we move on uh and i mean i i agree um but since this is going to come back um take it up next week Okay, well, um, we will, uh, I can change please to please try to, uh, and to try to uh, and keep the nudge in there, but not make it a mandatory sure. thing, you know. Um, I, and I just wanted to make sure we could have a fast process on the next call um, and just say, mm -hmm. okay, you know, here's all the changes and 
let's let's approve it that call. Yep. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you all. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Brian and Tracy. Okay. Next up is uh, agenda. Oh crap. Where's this? Com composer. If uh... composer is up. Yes. Sorry, I couldn't see the agenda. So I think Don is on. Yep. Hey, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, I can. Great. Hey everyone, I'm Don Tebow. I'm one of the offering managers on the IBM blockchain team. Um, I'll assume that everybody is familiar with Hyperledger Composer and, and saw at least the uh, request Simon sent out to the listserv and I just posted the link to that in the chat. Um, the net of it is that we'd like to move this latest release of Composer version 0 0.19 uh, to being version 1.0 um, and then also as well discuss the potential move from incubation to active. Uh, so as Simon outlined in his note, we feel we've met the majority of the requirements, save for one. Uh, so I'll just go straight to that, that one in question around community support. Um, so today we have three maintainers, Simon and Caroline, obviously from IBM, uh, as well as Dan Selman from Claws. Uh, we've seen strong community engagement, for example, you know, over 20,000 downloads of the Visual Studio extension uh, engagement on Rocket Chat and, and Stack Overflow, as well as the use of Composer in a number of client engagements, both within IBM uh, across a variety of industries with a number of other consulting firms, as well as some industry companies. So, you know, for instance, meeting one from Telco uh, a few weeks back that's used it for, they said, around four to five projects is, is definitely an indication of its use. Um, Finally, we've also seen other projects start to build on top of Composer. For example, one from uh, Accord uh, for something called Cicero, as well as a, a plugin that was submitted from a, an independent party for a wallet plugin for Amazon S3. Um, so we've seen, a, a, again, a good number of amount of community engagement, as well as this being served as the foundation for a number of enterprise engagements in blockchain. Um, so with that, I guess I'll pause there and, and open it up for discussions or, or comment there. So I just wanted to add that there is also still the remaining license issues that need to be resolved um, prior to right. Composer going to 1.0. Right, I know in, in Simon's yep. email it had mentioned that licensing was not a concern, but it, it still does have a few things that are outstanding that will need to go through the uh, legal committee if it stands as it is right now. That's right. Okay. Yeah, I, I apologize. I should have mentioned That's that okay. as well. And has this uh, gotten a security scan from Netitude yet? Uh, yes, I believe so. Yes, I am. Sorry, I, I was uh, muted. Um, no, it has not been scanned by Netitude. That's uh, the we held off on that because. Um, that's triggered by 1.0 and I was waiting for, um, you know, whether they needed to be out of incubation to be 1.0 was resolved, which sounds like it pretty much has. And so if they move to 1.0, we'll, we'll get that process going. Okay. But with, uh, with Sausage and Fabric, we had tried to do the scan before the 1.0. Yeah. Yeah. What I held off on was the, the fact that it was, um, it was still an in incubation and needed clarification. So, um, and Netitude just wrapped up Aroha, so we can get on their schedule now. But it still would take three, four weeks at least. That's correct, yeah. Well, probably longer. They, um, they said that if we didn't do it back when we were in their schedule, it was not going to be until May-ish. Yeah. Somewhere in there. So I will get them on the schedule if we're going to move forward on this. Don, have... Uh... Has I have blah, 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 blah. <laughs> has IBM done a uh, security scan? I know that with Fabric we did that. I believe you've done it for Composer as well. Yeah, so I know we've done a, a large amount of internal testing uh, and a security scan as well. I'm not sure if there was a specific group you're referring to that did it, uh, but I believe so. And Don, I, I missed. Your your relationship with the Composer project is you're a, you're one of the contributing developers on it, or uh, the offering manager, product manager that works primarily with Composer. Yeah, the 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 UK team is on holiday. 
Oh, okay. So the, oh. the IBM product uh, yes. offering based on that. Yes. Okay. Exactly. I think this is really close, but I feel like um, I, I, it, we need to get any licensing variation approved by the legal committee um, uh, as, as we'd required of Sawtooth and Fabric before it goes 1.0. Got it. So the, just, and I'll, I'll get the uh, security scan going um, if the TSC wants to spend the money. If, I'm assuming that's okay. a yes, right? Well, we want to spend the money. I think the core question is for the TSC is, um, uh, do you want to approve a 1.0 before the security scan is completed or not? I don't know that there's, there's not a hard requirement in our, in our standard, you know, in our release processes requirements for that. But we always presume we do it pretty close to a 1.0 mm -hmm. release and ideally before um, so that it's, yeah. but yeah. But they were in if incubation. So it was like, it wasn't very I, clear. Understand. Yeah, no, I don't think there's anything on, on you, Dave, for that. Yes. It's unclear uh, process that's that we're pathfinding through now. Uh, so I, I guess from my side, if if Simon or Caroline were here, I'd, I'd want to have some discussion with them on understanding the, the scope that they were aiming the project towards and uh, how they felt about its feature completeness and stuff like that. And I, I think it would be probably in the best interest of Composer to do that yeah. with with them. So, yeah, so I, I can definitely speak to some of that. So some of the, you know, most encouraging signs we've seen is its maturity and scalability, uh, specifically around how it's aligned to Hyperledger Fabric. So for instance, the support for Node.js chain code has given us a lot of enhanced capabilities um, in, in terms of both exposure of various fabric elements, uh, as well as improved scalability numbers. Um, again, we do feel it's been from a feature perspective and especially supporting things like, for instance, cloud wallet storage. Uh, it's been able to be used for a number, again, of, of more, our more mature, more mature client engagements. Um, I'm, I'm sure Caroline and Simon as well could speak to a number of the more specific technical features they felt have, have gotten us there. Okay, so does it sound like maybe we'll be picking this discussion up next week with them? Yeah, um, I'm, I'm happy to also start whatever is needed on our end from uh, security scan perspective, as well as I know we have the licensing uh, issue in progress right now. Uh, but if needed, we can make sure they're back on next week. I'll get a date from Netitude on when they can start the security scan, but I won't uh, commit. We'll just, uh, we'll get it lined up. Yep. That'd be great. And I think, Don, if we can sort of confirm that we've had, um, you know, pen testing and, and security audit done, mm -hmm. uh, I think that would be useful. I know we did that with Fabric. Will do. And I'm sure that Sawtooth did something similar for their own. Purposes, yeah. Um, and <clears throat> yeah, and I think having Simon or Caroline on to answer testable technical questions would be um, helpful. Um, Absolutely. And then again, I think um, the other, the other, you know, the security, no, the security, the license scan. I think we can be, you know, we can do contingent based on, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think, I think, I mean, what's, what's the general sense of the, the group of, of the TSC or from Dan, how about others? Don't all speak at once. Is, uh, how am I interpreting this? <laughs> Awkwardly, <laughs> um, maybe I can stimulate some some conversation. I guess the the thing that I would like the the maintainers to to be able to discuss is um, what what a, a sort of feature complete means for them and what that might mean for uh, the flexibility or inflexibility of of the architecture after that point, and then hear from them some discussion about what what that breath looks like 
um, and try to maybe also understand from that what are the motivations of going to a 1.0 now uh, as opposed to uh, maybe after reaching an active status or maybe after some other level of feature completeness uh, unless the, the discussion on that latter point is that the feature set today represents uh, the the preponderance of, of what they aspire to for uh, for the near future. Well, Don, as as the offering manager, I mean, from a feature completeness perspective, where where is your sense? Yeah, I mean, I mean, like I said, I think our sense is that we're there in in terms of what we're looking or added in the last two releases specifically. Uh, those resolved some of the key issues that we've been hitting in terms of the stability of the project to support, you know, ongoing use, you know, through the context of client deliverables, um, specifically things like the modeling language, um, some of the other technical APIs that have been exposed. Uh, I'm not sure, sorry, what, what, what specifically I, I can give that, that would be helpful on this, but um, it's very much been something that we're not looking to make any, you know, fundamentally breaking changes now as, as we move to 1.0. Uh, it really hopes to be uh, something that would deliver bug fixes, documentation updates, um, and any other community problems that, that surface. Okay, so that, that does help answer the question from IBM's perspective as an IBM product making use of, of Composer. And I think probably what I would like to hear then next week is the uh, sort of the, the community view on that. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So can I ask, <clears throat> do, do we feel at this point like we should start the process of uh, setting up a meeting with our legal committee to start talking about licensing or we're still waiting for, and maybe nobody on the call can answer this, we're still waiting for the, um, the changes to be made um, as of the last license scan that was completed this week. So, I mean, I can confirm that I think we're pushing for resolution on that. I think it was just one remaining issue for the license scan. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure how frequently the committee you mentioned meets, but it is something we're pushing to resolution as soon as possible. Okay. They, they kind of meet on demand. Um, it can take, you know, we, you don't, we tend to not, you know, uh, uh, want to give them just like a few days notice. You want to give them, you know, a, a week and a half or two weeks kind of notice to try to get most of them there. Um, Cause this is, you know, general counsels from the um, yep. same group of people who are on the governing board. Um, and then ultimately, if there is any variance from the standard, uh, it's going to be approved for the governing board, but that can happen out of cycle. Um, but there is a governing board meeting coming up uh, in the middle of uh, this month. So um, if it's an easy thing to do, we should try to get it on the agendas. If it's, you know, longer, let, take it, let's take this to email um, just so we can see actually what the variances are. Okay. We'll do it. All right. So, so we got to get wrapped are... up by next week. Yep. I really hate Zoom. Um, okay, so we're seven minutes uh, left. I could do the fabric update then if that's acceptable. And oh Christ. Fabric TSC. And link is here. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just futzing around. Oh, thank you. Okay. Ugh. Rocket Chat is really slow. What's the deal? Okay, fabric update. Um, so uh, we continue to uh, be growing and maturing as a community. In March, we had our 1.1 release, yay. Um, and <clears throat> we continue to grow the mix of contributors. Um, you know, we're down to the point where I think, and again, I think Tracy, maybe you have some slightly different numbers, but 
I'm seeing about 36% of the contributors from IBM, although it is true that about 80% of the code is coming from, from IBM. Uh, we do have a long tail, but it's growing, and I think that's, that's the good news. Um, uh, so we've had, uh, over the course of the past quarter, we've had 96 contributors, um, 18 companies, um, about almost 1,100 commits, and almost 700,000 line, 700, lines of code uh, changed in that time period. Um, I think we have a good mix of questions and answers and so forth in, in, uh, in our chat and our email. The, the mailing list continues to um, be a little bit spiky. It goes from about 250 to 350. Uh, we had about 380, I think it was, during March when we had the release. So it tends to spike around a release when there's new content and questions about that um, or, you know, uh, people are having discussions about getting to the new content. Um, and then in Stack Overflow, we're actually having pretty good uh, traffic there as well. We have uh, 1,450 questions, which is an increase of about 450 over um, the last report I did out. Um, and again, the, the questions there continue to be increasingly sophisticated, which is, a, a, I think, a good sign. Um, uh, issues again. We're we're trying to make more effective use of Jira. I think uh, Dave, to your uh, previous uh, search for a Jira consultant, that seems to be very expensive. Um, and then we found out, of course, that others had been able to sort of show Rye cop copy paste uh, versions of a configured Jira. I think we've been able to sort of move past some of the impasse that we had previously, and uh, have been able to change the configuration. Uh, to to suit at least most of our in interests. I think there's some integrations we'd like to do, but that's not critical. Great. We'll keep working on that then. <clears throat> yep. As noted, um, we, we had our 1.1 release in March. Uh, we also had an additional three releases. We did our 106 patch release and uh, published an alpha and a release candidate in the interim over the course of the first quarter. Um, the rate of downloads of Fabric uh, has nearly doubled, so uh, I think a lot of that was driven by the 1.1 release and some of the, uh, the previous releases. So again, more good signs of uptake by the community. Um, and the other interesting point to note is that we're adopting a quarterly release cycle uh, going forward. So the next release should be in uh, end of June. Um, uh, I talked about the activity over the last quarter already, current plans. Um, we published our one, so we had a maintainers meeting in uh, early February in Boston, um, and we chose our sort of th themes for the 1.2 release. We also, you know, at that point agreed that we're going to do quarter releases and so forth. Um, and so we published our 1.2 roadmap. And, um, uh, and there's also a corresponding JIRA dashboard that has more detail on each of the epics that are uh, being considered as part of the 1.2 release, at least for now. Um, we have frequent playback meetings. Oh, I meant to put a link in here for that. Um, and uh, for, for design review of new features and or improvements. And um, we intend to continue the, the process of having regular maintainer hangouts on Zoom. Um, uh, where we'll track the, the progress towards a release and have any other um, discussion. We, you know, the first one we had, damn it, I meant to put, I, I had to do this twice because something happened and I lost the page. Um, I'll put in a link here to also to the, um, uh, we had a uh, release uh, retrospective uh, last week and uh, I will publish the link to that document as well. Um, diversity of the maintainers uh, is static, uh, but I see some potential on the horizon um, to add uh, new maintainers, uh, not from IBM and from IBM. Um, contributor diversity is, uh, again, it's growing. Um, there's a number of new individuals that are um, seemingly not affiliated um, that are starting to make really great additions. And then we've also started to see contributions coming from Accenture, BBVA, Oracle, and Block Ledger. Um, so those are the, some of the new uh, contributors that I've seen in the past quarter. And um, 
There continues to be some collaboration with Borough on the Fabric EVM project. Uh, I demoed that for Gartner the other day, and then um, I think you'll start to see some more um, collaboration with Indy and Fabric. Um, uh, yesterday, IBM announced joining the Sovereign Foundation, for instance, and um, uh, and we're hosting a node. So all good news. Um, that's about it. Any questions? Am I the only one on? I guess no. that's it. If there are no questions, Mark will put you up first next week. Okay. Uh, apologies for that. We had a long discussion on the working group stuff. Um, and uh, we're at end of job, so talk to you all next week. Cheers. Thanks. Have a good day, everyone. Bye. Bye.